Well, we're back here with another Build Biology, and today I have the first one of this car built in the galaxy. What's up, Tiana? Hey, John, what's up? High fives. <laughs> nice. I brought you my 2001 Ford Mustang GT wheelie machine. I built it for that. I mean, it's purposely built to do fun wheelies. Let's check it out. So it's actually a Porsche gray color. It was silver from the factory. Majority of my cars are gray. I have a two inch true fiber cowl hood just to give it a little bit more breathing room. They're not crazy cowl hood where it's obstructing my view. Mm -hmm. I've got the little black little Mustang here with a little surprise. Oh, that is cool. Something super basic, a little sleeper look to it. I don't want to add too many flashy things to it. When I pull up, there's some surprises that will show up. <laughs> yeah. So, so the whole idea is the true sleeper. True sleeper. True sleeper looks just like a gray Mustang rolling down the street. I could put basic street tires on it with street wheels and no one would think anything of it. In the front, I've got my favorite weld wheels with the S71s, 15 inch. I don't have to convert the brakes to be able to fit the 15 inch, they just automatically fit. So there's a lot of savings with a Mustang where you don't have to do any brake conversions to fit the smaller diameter wheel. This uh, is a wheel. Those ones just came with, with the package. I typically go with like Mickey Thompson SS's. That's like a four and a half inch tire, maybe five inch tire. I would say it's like a six. Is it? Either way, it's pretty small. It's small. On the car. You know, you call them like pizza cutters yeah. when you're going down the track. It basically carves your way to go straight. So if you have too fat of a tire in the front, you know, the car will get a little crazy top end and shift in different directions. You don't want it to go. I mean, you want it to go straight. Everything else in this car looks pretty much stock. Yeah, stock. I mean, I mean tint is you brown. Got some, you got ucky. some tin in there. Oh yeah, it's it's old. Cosmetics is cool and all, but it's expensive. So I have other priorities. So we got on the back though. So I've got the Mickey Thompson or ET drags. They are the bias ply drag slicks. So I stick with the bias ply tire. Still a small tire though. So 28, 10 and a half. Don't want to go anything too crazy when the car squats. You could literally, you know, rip some things out or cause some indentation. Run it about 13 pounds, sometimes maybe 11, depending on the track, but that's pretty standard. Let's get inside the interior. Let's go on the... Okay. It's just a street car. It's just, just yeah, a street, street car, car, man. I mean, no one else needs to go for rides with me <laughs> except for my nitrous bottle. I've got my 15 pounder with me today. Little safety extinguisher just in case thing happens. And I have to have my purse holder. Um, I've got actually a Wild Rides 10 point Bolton mild steel cage that I had welded in. As you can see, it's got that awesome NHRA certification. Yep. You know how to get one of those. Yeah, I know now. We've got the Pro EFI. This is what runs the entire car. I could control four stages of nitrous. I can control timing. I control launching, traction, everything. I mean, whatever you want the car to do, that will do it. Over here, I've got my Kirky seat. Before I had some nice cushy race seats, but I found out when shifting a, a very high horsepower vehicle, uh, a lot of movement doesn't help with shifting and clutch. So I wanted something where it doesn't go anywhere. So a Kirky seat, I mean, as you know, it doesn't move anywhere. Yeah. It's best for, you know, customizing it for you to fit in your vehicle and no one else can fit like a six foot tall husband of yours. So it's literally mine. Um, I've got my awesome steering wheel with my line lock for brake control when I'm doing a burnout and also roll control because typically any stick shift driver in Irwindale will know that it's on a little hill. Yeah, it goes down. <laughs> so you got to hold the button so you don't roll past the beams when going. I've been racing for over 16 years, building my own vehicles with my husband, racing them every Thursday night, just having fun, trying to get faster and faster and basically just beat each other. What do you got start? What is going on here? <laughs> in this this was like a purpose built, you know, street car. So you've got to have enough fluid to drive places. I mean, everything is hard lined. So you could see uh, all the lines for the fuel. Mm -hmm. So I've got my Davies Craig water pump to pump this puppy all the way to the front and back. You can see also back here, I've got uh, two controls for my fuel pump. So it's not the cleanliest thing back there, but it's functional. She don't look good, but she moves. <laughs> Gianna, let's talk about what everyone really wants to know about. 
So I've got a little surprise about what's under the hood. It's not your typical modular motor. Okay. What is this? LS swaps are obviously pretty common. They make kits for them yeah. and they put them in this. I was supposed to do an LS swap in a Porsche. That was what this original build was supposed to be, but I went with a Mustang. Everything is basically bolt in, but this has never been in a vehicle of this sort before. So this is like the first LS9 swapped Mustang. In the, in the world. In the world. Galaxy. First one. The LS9 comes in a ZR1 Corvette. Very rare, very expensive. Basically like a domestic supercar. It has titanium rods from factory. It has forged aluminum pistons. It has oil squirters in it for cooling. So it's just this whole advanced engine that's literally hand built. And there's a little plaque over oh. here showing who built. Yeah, the assembler. Yeah, the assembler who built it and it can handle 1400 plus horsepower from factory. But I did slip in a GP tuning cam motion cam. The heads are ported from West Coast cylinder. Heads right in Van Nuys, so they're local. Brian Tooley, dual platinum springs, chromoly push rods, your basic, you know, cam swap LS deal to give you a bit more power and why she sounds a little choppy. The blower is actually the most interesting part. It's a 2.3 liter supercharger from factory, but I want more power because basic is just not enough for me. And something that's gonna scare me is gonna need a little bit more power than your standard LS9. So Kong Performance actually ported the supercharger and then he ported the snout too, but this is a snout that's been enlarged. Like he cuts it, ports it, re-welds it, and it's now a 108 millimeter supercharger snout. It's huge. The throttle body is only 102 millimeters. So <laughs> you could stick your fist in this hole. If you take off this intake, you could stick your whole arm into this snout, into the supercharger, it's so big. So if you can see, this is only like a 2.20 pulley. She's a, she's a baby. She's putting about 21 pounds right now out of the stock supercharger. 21 pounds of screaming victory right there. <laughs> yeah, just American Eagles everywhere. I just dynoed it without the nitrous, but on drag radials. And it did about 860 to the tire. So I mean, this thing is making about a thousand crank. Yeah. And then with this nitrous outlet direct port system, I mean, I could shove another 300 to it. So obviously with this huge and massive snout, how are we gonna get air? I mean, there's space, right? There's space to put things, but LP Racing had to literally cut into my vehicle and put basically bigger than a diesel truck filter. Oh yeah, that's pretty massive. in all the air. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's just all the air. So another cool thing about the motor though, this is the dry sump. Ah. So LS9s from factory come with a dry sump. So I know you don't see your typical ZR1 owner doing wheelies and whatnot, but it was built for like road course and autocross so that when the oil sloshing, it doesn't slosh and the motor is in lack of oil. Dash 10 fuel line, so all the fuel. Oh yeah, and I got my Aeromotive fuel regulator. So Over it's here. actually con controlled by boost with Pro EFI. So you see the sensor on it. Yeah, so yeah. boost and fuel pressure is all controlled and regulated. So more boost, it's gonna raise the fuel pressure. With this setup, uh, without the nitrous, with me shifting gears, I'm going for 890. This build is so fresh. I've gotten to the track like two times. And so I want 890 on nitrous, depending on the shot, 100 to 300 hit, probably about mid to low eights. I call it the virus. It, I think it makes people literally disgusted. Obviously you have the Ford owners that aren't happy with putting a Chevy in their Ford, but then you've got the Chevy people are like, why in the world would you put such a godly motor into this car? <laughs> and I'm like, cause I got it cheaper than any other LS. I built this car to scare me. And the easiest way to do that is with more horsepower. So I, I, I hope this will do it. If I'm, not, I'm gonna have to find something that will. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a lot, and this is not a big car, so. No, it weighs about 3,000 pounds. It's got an yeah. aluminum block. There's nothing up here, like nothing. So all it's, do, all it's going to do is this. I mean, if I could shift first gear, it pops a wheelie. I could shift second, and it pops another wheelie. Like, my goal has been met. I don't even care what it runs. I just want to pop a couple wheelies. Let's get on lift and look under the suspension and see what you got going on, because to handle that much power, that has to be something special. <laughs> A 
a good reason to buy a Mustang is it comes with an 8.8 .8 rear end. You don't have to purchase one like a nine inch or, or anything else. You could just get the one from the factory, weld the axle tubes for strength, and literally put some gears and a cover on it to hold the spool. I mean, I've got 355 Ford racing gears in it. I borrowed these from my husband. What a nice guy. What, isn't he so nice? He gave me some double adjustable Viking coilovers. I kind of wrecked his front shocks, so I had to borrow his rears. <laughs> we got my Holly VR2 brushless yeah. fuel pump. It holds about, well, I think it can hold about 5,000 horsepower. That was supposed to go on Brandon's car too, but I took that. A drive shaft with, oh, and the little secret little sensor here. Oh yeah, what are you running that for? Maybe, What's controlling that? Maybe traction control for my ah, wheel speed. Nice. So we got, you know, a custom exhaust system that's pretty quiet and you could drive it on the street. Yeah, what mufflers are these? Perform mufflers. Tito Arcworks did this whole custom exhaust for the car. It's pretty quiet, pretty tame. Well, they come actually up to this RPM level five T56. I know you're familiar with yourself. I've got a monster triple disc clutch in here. You could drive it basically like stock, but it's going to hold 1100 horsepower like nothing. Literally, we put it in and he's like, I'm like, what kind of break in does this one need? He was like, send it. I'm going to send it. I've got ARH two inch header primaries. Only one tube had to be kind of fabricated to fit this setup, but it's better than building all new exhaust setup for it. It's a lot cheaper. So those fit really well with their LS swap headers. So I got some Will Woods. They got their drag race brakes, four piston calipers. Um, these things are crazy. Yeah. So these are the stop it before you smash an oil pan yeah. or press headers. headers. Yeah. So I mean, these UPR bars are literally oil pan savers. But in my case, my whole header setup, exhaust setup, my oil pan is essentially the dry sump. But I mean, yeah. that's still not a cheap thing to, you know, replace. Oh yeah, tubular K member. I mean. Yeah. That's one step you do in a Mustang to not only lose weight, but for an LS swap, all you need to do is get LS motor mounts. I mean, no one's telling you what to put in it. It's literally build it and figure it out. So we got a quick time bell housing. You know, you could totally have a catastrophic event happen if you don't have some sort of bell housing around your clutch. I know a few people that have had the clutch go through basically the whole inside of the car and chop off a couple toes, feet, yep. you know, anything like that. So you get in the stronger SFI rated bell housing and kind of basically to save yourself. Well, this thing is cool. I can't wait to see you go rip it. It's built to run. It's built to run. I mean, the purpose built wheelie drag car, kick my husband's butt type car, kind of like roll up to the track and rev it a couple times and just bust off that wheelie and scare the living poop out of people. Hopefully myself. That'd be cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for bringing it by. Thanks. You know the funny thing about these guys? I asked Tiana, like, hey, what do you guys do besides car? And they had absolutely no response. <laughs> All they do is car. Mustangs have weird smells. I'm not saying it. She's saying it. They stink. Oh my gosh, whatever. <laughs>